welcome today we will see thick cylindrical shells subject to an internal pressure then the ratio of the inner diameter of the cylinder to the wall thickness is greater than 10 to 15 the cylinder is called as thick cylinder hydraulic cylinder high pressure pipes and gun barrels are examples of thick cylinder the radial stress sigma r is neglected in cylinders, quite a bit of significant magnitude in case of thick cylinders. There are number of equations for the design of thick cylinders. The choice of equation depends upon two parameters. Cylinder material that is whether fatal or ductile and condition of cylinder ends that is open or closed. In the design of thick cylindrical shells, the following equations are most used. First Lagrange equation, second Pirnie's equation, Third, clever nose equation. Now we will see the damage equation. When the material of the cylinder is brittle, such as cast iron or cast steel, damage equation is used to determine the water. It is based on the maximum principal stress theory of failure, whereas maximum principal stress is equated to permissible stress for the material. Three principal stresses at the inner surface of the cylinder are as follows. Sigma R is equal to minus Pi equation 1. Sigma T is equal to Pi plus Pi into bracket d o square plus d square divided by d o square minus d square equation 2. And sigma L is equal to Pi d square divided by d o square minus d square equation 3. Therefore, sigma T is greater than sigma L greater than sigma R. Hence, sigma T is the criterion of design. From equation 2, sigma T upon Pi is equal to d o square by d r square divided by d o square by d r square therefore cross multiplying sigma t into bracket d o square by d r square plus p i into bracket d o square by d r square therefore sigma t into d o square minus sigma t into d r square is equal to p i into d o square plus p i into d r square therefore rearranging the terms sigma t into d o square minus p i into d o square is equal to sigma t into d r square plus p i into d r square taking d o square and d r square outside Therefore, d o square upon d square is equal to sigma t plus pi divided by sigma t minus pi. Therefore, d o divided by d r by square is equal to sigma t plus pi divided by sigma t minus pi. Therefore, d o divided by d r is equal to square root of sigma t plus pi divided by sigma t minus pi. So, in d o is equal to d r plus 2 t in the above equation. Therefore, d r plus 2 t divided by d r is equal to square root of sigma t plus pi divided by sigma t minus pi. Therefore, 1 plus 2 t divided by di is equal to square root of sigma t plus pi divided by sigma t minus pi. Therefore, 2 t divided by di is equal to square root of sigma t plus pi divided by sigma t minus pi minus 1. Therefore, t is equal to pi divided by t into square root of sigma t plus pi divided by sigma t minus pi minus 1. Where sigma t is the s u t divided by fs. Now, we will see Birney's equation. In case of open end cylinders such as foam cylinders, ramps, gun barrels, etc., made of ductile metal that is low carbon steel, brass, bronze, and aluminum alloys, the allowable stresses cannot be determined by means of maximum stress theory of failure. In such cases, the maximum strain theory is used. According to this theory, the failure occurs when the strain reaches cylindrical value. Birney's equation for the wall thickness of a cylinder. Is given by p is equal to di divided by t into bracket square root of sigma plus 1 minus mu into pi divided by sigma minus into bracket 1 plus mu into pi minus 1 bracket 1. Now we will see Clavier nose equation. This equation is based on the maximum strain theory of failure, but it is applied to closed end cylinders or cylinders fitted with heads made of ductile metal. According to this equation, the thickness of the cylinder is given by t is equal to di divided by t into bracket square root of sigma plus 1 minus 2 mu into pi divided by sigma minus 1 plus mu into pi minus 1. Where sigma is equal to s y t divided by fs. Now we will see autocritic or pre stressing. Autocritic is the process of pre stressing the cylinder before using it in service. It is used in case of high pressure cylinders and gun barrels. When the cylinder is subjected to an internal pressure, the circumferential stress sigma t at the inner surface limits the pressure capacity of the cylinder. 
in the pre stressing process residual compressive stresses are developed by adding mass at the when the cylinder is loaded in service the residual compressive stresses at the inner surface begin to decrease become zero and finally become tensile as the pressure is gradually increased auto pressure increases the pressure capacity of cylinder it has another advantage that the residual compressive pressure slows the cracks within the cylinder resulting in increase in volume there are three methods of pre stressing the cylinder they are as follows first compound cylinder it consists of two concentric cylinders with outer cylinder shown on the inner this induces compressive stresses in the inner cylinder compound cylinder is extensively used in service a compound cylinder consisting of a cylinder and the jacket is shown in figure a the inner rank of the jacket is slightly smaller than the outer rank of the cylinder this is the compound cylinder a this is the cylinder a this is the jacket when the jacket is heated it expands sufficiently to move over the cylinder as the jacket cools it tends to contract onto the inner cylinder which induces residual compressive stresses there is a shrinkage pressure p between the cylinder and the jacket the pressure p tends to contract the cylinder and expand the jacket as shown in figures b and c the shrinkage pressure p can be evaluated from the below equation for a given amount of interference delta so the delta is equal to p d to the r by capital e that is young's modulus into bracket 2 d to square into bracket d to square minus d minus square divided by d to square minus d to square into d to square minus d minus square the resultant stresses in a compound cylinder are formed by superimposing the two stresses stresses due to shrink fit and those due to internal pressure second method overloading cylinder the second method consists of overloading the cylinder before it is put into service the overloading pressure is adjusted in such a way that a portion of the cylinder near the inner diameter is subjected to stresses in the plastic range while the outer portion is still in the elastic range when the pressure is released the outer portion contracts exerting pressure on the inner portion which has undergone permanent deformation this induces residual compressive stresses at the inner surface third is the wire method in the third method a wire under tension is closely wound around the cylinder which results in residual compressive stresses okay. thank you very much